Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our lectures on uh, cardiology. So our topic today is uh, arrhythmia. We're going to be talking about arrhythmia. This is a kind of topic, ladies and gentlemen, that honestly speaking, uh, when I was in medical school, I tried my best to understand the basics of what arrhythmia is. I tried it. I learned it over time. As I went to my clinicals, I continued to do uh, study and for my board exams and all this. It is it's a very, very confusing topic. Honestly speaking, uh, the best for you would be to understand the basics of arrhythmia. Once you understand the physiology of the myocardial cells, the action potentials and all that, and then you want to build upon that, your uh, upon your basics, then you want to build up on how to diagnose uh, abnormal electrical activity of the heart or arrhythmias and stuff like that, and uh, basically to treat them. But today what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and talk about arrhythmia. So please uh, bear with me. I'll do my best to make sure that I can... Uh, explain some uh explain the lecture in a best possible manner uh all right ladies and gentlemen so let's continue let's start uh, with our lecture called arrhythmia what is arrhythmia first of all arrhythmia is basically to look at arrhythmia arrhythmia is an abnormal electrical activity of the heart that can lead to chest pain shortness of breath syncope or sudden cardiac arrest chest pain or palpitations sometimes people will say palpitations or funny sensations in the heart funny sensations so it's a different different way of people complaining uh, they're having their uh, basically they can explain their symptoms to you before we continue to know what is a normal rhythm usually uh, for a cardiac cells cardiac uh, pacemaker cells and stuff like that so in order for us to understand normal rhythm we have to know a couple of things these four criteria must be met for uh, a rhythm to be normal so the first criteria is that the pace make the electrical activity should be electrical activity should be generated from activity should be generated from the pacemaker from pacemaker which is the SA node which is the main SA node is the main pacemaker that has to be generated from the electrical activity or the impulse has to be generated from SA node in order to, for it to be considered a normal uh, electrical uh, activity of the heart. Number two, it has the beats has to be around 60 to 100 beats per minute. That's usually considered normal. It must go through, must go through normal conduction pathway through normal conduction pathway conduction which is I will explain you guys what is that normal conduction pathway is basically from SA to AV node to bundle of his and all that basically I'll explain this a little bit um, and then it has to travel at a normal velocity at a normal velocity it cannot be too fast or too slow all right so this is the it must maintain this following criteria for uh, uh rent for b to be considered uh for an electrical impulse to be considered at a normal uh, rhythm it's considered to, uh, not abnormal basically it's, it's that's uh basically the criteria four criteria must be met and anything about the, out of this four criteria will be considered an abnormal electrical activity or arrhythmia and so first of all before we continue any further let's consist i mean let's explain a little bit the pacemakers so the sa node is the main uh, pacemaker that generates the impulse it sends back sends the impulse through the um, tracts which is the anterior tract the middle tract and the posterior tract and the bundle backman's bundle that sends it to the left atria usually people don't really talk about this a lot because they just want to go from SA node to AV node, but it's always good to have a knowledge of how the electrical activity has gone through the whole atria. So you have to know the tracts or the one responsible that carries this uh, electrical impulse from SA node to the rest of the atrias. And then it goes to the AV node. So the AV node is right here. It's located between the atria and ventricle. It's near the atrioventricular junction. 
and uh, after the atria at the AV node it goes down to bundle of his as you can see in here the bundle of his is going to be dividing into the right and left bundle branch right and left bundle branch and then the left bundle branch is going to divide into the posterior fascicle and anterior fascicle and the right bundle branch is going to go by itself so the right bundle branch and the post and the fascicles of the left bundle branch they give rise to something called Purkinje fibers they're responsible for giving rise to that all right so I think you guys understood I'm not going to spend a lot of time if you really need to just look at this picture yourself put this in your brain on how the normal pathway is conducted the electrical activity is conducted through this pathway how it's conducted okay we're going to move a little bit for, uh, forward and uh, talk about the main mechanism of arrhythmia because that is very important for us compared to what we're going to what we're doing right now all right let's move forward mechanism of arrhythmia so this is what it is is basically uh, how does the arrhythmia usually act, occur? Okay, let me just tell you guys, ladies and gentlemen, let's say if we have an electric, like the heart has electrical activity, right? It must generate its own electrical activity and it must send it through different circuits like the pacemakers. For example, SA node is supposed to send it to the conductance system in AV node and then bundle of his. So in order for an arrhythmia, how does it occur so it must be able to generate the impulse and it must be able so generation should be perfect as well as the traffic checks like bundle of his essay node and all these the conductance pathway has to be perfect so we can say that the arrhythmia arrhythmia can be divided into two main parts it's either the problem will be an altered impulse formation impulse or altered conduction problem alteration in the conduction uh, conduction of impulse basically alteration and conduction of impulse that's what another so either it's altered impulse formation or alteration in the conduction of impulse this is very high yield so once you understand these two then you can kind of branch these two out and say okay what is causing the impulse altered impulse formation or like something that does not allow the electricity to be generated by itself what is that thing so of course the first thing we're going to we can look at is like something that's abnormal automaticity due to abnormal automaticity now what does this mean abnormal automaticity means like let's say for example if we have this atria right here we have an ectopic foci right here due to a myocardial infarction or some sort of thing what happens is that this starts to if this in starts to generate more impulses than the pacemaker itself it's going to start to take the con control it's going to start to take the control of pacemaker activity from here and it's going to start to generate more impulses of what compared to what an essay node generates so that's one formation of ectopic foci can generate more uh, impulses than an essay node itself let's say that's one reason another reason what can happen is that the impulses in essay node can be uh, basically influenced by certain things like parasympathetic sympathetic for example neurohormonal tone parasympathetic and sympathetic activity can increase the impulses in the essay node and the AV node and it can cause it to go ahead and increase in um, formation of the impulse and that might lead to an increase in the heart rate and um, abnormal electrical activity or arrhythmia okay what about uh, any abnormal metabolic conditions for example hypoxia right hypovolemia these are all signs that can increase the abnormal uh, the formation of impulse and the SA node it can be it can influence the SA node by the parasympathetic or sympathetic activity somehow it will influence it electrolyte imbalances for example hyper hypokalemia can increase the um, myocardium cells to form different kind of uh, pacemaker activity micro specialized myocardial like hypocalcemia can cause or hypercalcemia can cause increase in the um, formation of uh, generation of impulses and stuff like that and for example digital talk to digitalis toxicity ischemia other cardiac pathologies such as 
like uh, for example previous myocardial infarction stuff like that so you understand my point my point is basically to tell you guys that the impulse that's being generated by the SA node is either somebody else is generating it for example in here and another ectopic foci is generating it or it's being influenced with some sort of environment like outside uh, factor for example parasympathetic or sympathetic or due to decrease or increase in oxygen supply that's leading to bradycardia or tachycardia and all these things are just influential of formation of the impulse and the SA note or of the heart so that's what it leads to arrhythmia so that's why we say altered impulse formation and that's one branch of it is due to abnormal automaticity now another branch of it it could be let's say we have a myocardial cell right if we have a myocardial cell of course we're gonna have a positive negative myocardial cells and then positive outside in order for depolarization to happen the positive is gonna come here and it's gonna start forming positive so cell gets depolarized now let's say we call that next branch triggered activity due to after depolarization and it's divided into early after depolarization or late after depolarization so what happens let's say the cell is about to go ahead and get depolarized this is a normal action potential of a cell phase zero is the upstroke phase phase one is when the calcium channels are about to open and then the sodium channel closes the calcium channel opens and here we go that potassium channel starts to open again and it starts to repolarize back here but look at this this is phase two and phase three are known as the early after repolarization after depolarization because what happens is then there's some sort of abnormality in the calcium the electrolyte channels for example the calcium channel um l type cancel cha l type calcium channels or formation uh, or basically there's some sort of abnormality in there and uh, what happens is in this time another impulse is generated and it leads to a uh, formation of an, an abnormal electrical activity of the heart so this is called early because it's before the phase uh, four it's before uh, between phase two and phase three so in phase three it can happen as you see here and in phase two there could be another action potential generated and it's causing leading to an electrical depolarization abnormal electrical depolarization so this is called early after depolarization and of course you guys know that this can lead to an arrhythmia correct that's right so phase four after we have completed phase three we have the phase four where the repolarization occurs but before the repolarization completely occurs in phase four another generation of another uh, electrical uh, deep electrical activity occurs and the depolarization the cell gets depolarized again that's called late after depolarization and that's why you can see it it's happening after phase four in here and that by, tell, by itself tells you that this, this is also a reason that arrhythmias can occur so as we said the earlies can happen due to some abnormal uh, electrolyte channels imbalances for example the opening of l-type calcium channels is responsible for that so what's what are some things that can contribute to the early um, basically uh, uh, after depolarization for example if you can have a prolonged qt interval so if you have a prolonged qt interval there's a high chance that you might precipitate an arrhythmia or an early after depolarization hypoxia bradycardia acidosis hypokalemia these are all the reasons because ladies and gentlemen look at this if you have low potassium here so the repo the potassium cannot get out much so of course the cell is still in a positive state and the pot positives cannot get out a lot so you're still going to leave the cell in positive and it will lead to abnormal another deep electrical uh, action potential happening at this time hypokalemia so you see that and with late after depolarization we can also say that delayed is because of increased intracellular calcium that leads to hypercalcemia of course and hypercalcemia is responsible for generating uh, for example myocardial uh, increasing the positive uh, um, positive electrical activity inside the cell and causing an uh, another action potential formation to be happening inside the cell that can happen after uh, the 
partial repolarization. All right, for example, dig digitalis toxicity is another reason that can uh, cause an abnormal electrical late depolarized, late after depolarization. So this was the first reason that an arrhythmia can happen because of. Now let's say we have some problem with the alteration in the conduction system, right? Because the impulse formation, we figured it out, okay, if there's an impulse formation problem, we either know it's because of an abnormal automaticity that another ectopic foci has taken care of it or some sort of neural hormonal tone has influenced the SA node or something like that, or we probably have some sort of triggered activity due to after depolarization. So this is the this was the one pathway and mechanism of arrhythmia that can happen. Another mechanism of arrhythmia that can happen is we said that the conduction system might have a problem. We might have a problem with some sort of conduction in the uh, pathways, like for example, the SA node, the AV node, or the bundle of His or bundle branches or Purkinje fibers. So this is another thing is the, the arrhythmia can occur is because of problems like that. So we're going to go further and talk about what are some mechanisms of alteration in the conduction of impulses. Of course, the one thing that we should talk about in that is re-entry circuit. Now, for, in order for me to explain re-entry circuit for you guys, let me draw something very small here and then we can take this a little bit uh, further, explain it for you. Okay. So let's say we have our AV node cells, one of the cells on the AV node, we sent an electrical signal down the AV node. So this is a fast, let's say we have this as a slow, slow conducting pathway and fast conducting pathway, fast conducting pathway. Our slow conducting pathway, however, has fast refractory period fast refractory period okay and our fast conducting has a slow refractory period meaning the cells cannot be excited within this period of time when the electrical activity is going on so let's say i sent an electrical activity from sa node it goes down to come through this uh, av node so the av node and this, when it comes to here it's going to divide into the slow pathway and it's going to divide into the fast pathway right so what happens is the fast pathway and the slow pathway both sends the electrical activity down to the ventricles for this the conduction is very slow so it's going to slow the fast pathway sends conductance it conducts very fast and it that's it it conducts very fast and there it stays in a refractory period while that conductance even though it conducted very fast however it has a longer uh, refractory period we cannot say fast refractory but we can say long refractory period okay long refractory so it will not be excitable for a while the slow pathway however slow conductance pathway uh, has uh, slowly it conducts but it once it conducts it comes here and this when it comes in contact with this pathway the fast conductance pathway it sees that it's in refractory period so you cannot excite it so both the impulse goes down into the ventricles and now it starts to uh, another firing can happen and then this becomes a short refractory period okay so now let's say for example for some sort of reason, if this fast pathway, for some sort of reason, if this fast pathway has, it conducts fast and it kind of because of some sort of like electrical uh, abnormality or some sort of fibrosis or some sort of schema that happened in the past has led this fibers to happen to conduct fast and it goes back to refractory faster in the refractory period. It goes back, it doesn't stay long in refractory period. So what happens when this uh, slow conductance comes and meet with the fast conductance pathway and sees that it's not in refractory, it's gonna activate or send an impulse through this pathway. And this impulse is gonna go ahead and it's gonna start going round and round and round and round and round and round again, right? 
So because this was not in refractory period, so when the slow pathway, the slow conductance pathway came here and it got to meet with the fast conducting pathway, it saw that it was not in refractory period anymore and it just generated an impulse and this impulse hence went through and it went back and of course it went to this uh, slow conductance pathway because this was already coming off the refractory period as well so it started to round and round and round and round and it forms a re-entry circuit and it sends faster electrical activity to the ventricles which is usually around the beats of 100 to 250 beats per minute they start to generate and they show a narrow QRS complex on the ECG. I understand this is a very, very complex process, but ladies and gentlemen, I just want to be quickly, I want to review this quickly one more time for you. So the re-entry circuit is basically, it has a slow conductance pathway with a short refractory period. It has a fast conductance pathway with a long refractory period. The impulse is coming through into the AV node it goes through the slow pathway and the fast pathway. The fast pathway has a longer refractory period. So the longer the refractory period, you cannot excite the cell until it goes back, it gets off the refractory period. So the slow pathway has a short refractory period. Let's say for abnormal reasons, some sort of reason, the fast conductant pathway comes back, has a shorter refractory period for any sort of reason, for example, uh, some sort of uh, fibrosis or something like that, the slow conductance pathway comes and meets with that non-refractory cell and it excites it and it causes a re-entrant circuit and hence a re-entry circuit is built. Okay, so I hope you guys understood this. This is a little bit confusing, but let me just explain some other uh, reasons on why is the impulse conduction abnormal so another reason that the impulse can be conducted abnormally is of course because of a conduction block the conduction block is another reason that for example let's say if we have the AV node let me just go ahead for example take this picture back so if we have the AV node and there is a for example due to ischemia the AV node has been damaged or due to some sort of trauma or something like that or fibrosis or some idiopathic reasons the conduction system has been fibrosed of course when I send electrical activity from SA node to the AV node the impulse will not be coming down into the uh, ventricles as fast because it cannot go through this because of fibrosis happens so it will just either uh, neutralize or it will just re-enter enter back to the atria and cause an a, a supraventricular tachycardia and hence if the ventricles don't feel that the impulse is coming through the bundle of his and the bundle branches will start to take over the pacemaker's activity and start to generate its own electrical activity and her impulse formation and that's why it's referred to as an abnormal electrical activity so that's the conduction blocks that the reason things can happen what is a bypass tract a bypass tract is for example let's say we have a ventricle we have an atria we have the ventricles we have the av node let's say in here we have another tract instead of the pathway going from sa node to av node and then from AV node to bundle of his and to bundle branches, it actually signal can be sent through this way to the ventricles before uh, the AV node sends the signal to the ventricles. And that's called the accessory pathway. And this accessory pathway has a very good um, syndrome with it associated. It's called Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, as we're going to talk about it in a bit. But ladies and gentlemen, it is quickly. I will review this one more time for you guys just to make sure that I have explained the basics of arrhythmia before we go into the detail of the what arrhythmic uh, situations can we face later because it's very important for you to understand as i said the basics not the high yield if your basics is good you know the conduction pathways well you know how what's the reason from due to the mechanism of the arrhythmias that are formed it will be much easier for you to understand and pick up small little um uh, abnormal uh, ECGs and later on. All right, so again, we're saying, what is arrhythmia? Arrhythmia is an abnormal electrical activity of the heart that's uh, causing symptom symptoms for somebody. And uh, the normal pathway is SA node through the tracts. It sends it to the atria and to the AV node 
what I made and what a mess I made on this here on the ignore and everything so just to teach you guys look what I had to go through but anyways so this is the pathway basically to AV node to bundle of his and to bundle branches and to fascicles and to Purkinje fibers we say this is the normal activity that or normal rhythm from in order for a heart pacemaker to be in have a normal rhythm this follow for following must be met electrical activity from SA node must be generated that's the pacemaker the 60 to 100 beats must go through a normal conduction travels at normal velocity and it's called normal rhythm abnormal rhythm or arrhythmia is divided into two altered impulse formation and altered conduction altered impulse conduction in altered impulse formation we say we have either abnormal automaticity or triggered triggered depolarization right triggered activity due to depolarization and when we said we have triggered activity due to depolarization it's either early or late that's the two things that can happen and abnormal automaticity is of course due to a ectopic foci or neurohormonal uh, neurohormonal kind of activity that's increasing the pacemakers activity like for example the SA nodes activity and all that thing and electrical electrolyte abnormalities can cause that um, impulse altered impulse formation on the SA node and can lead to abnormal heart rate triggered activity due to after depolarization was a little bit hard to understand but still you can see that the action potential normal action potential and you can see in the phase two and between phase three there is another action potential generated and this is known as early after depolarization and late after depolarization is after the repolarization occurs but before the phase four it starts to form another action potential and uh, that's about it and there's some contributions from prolonged uh, contributions that can happen for because of this action potential after depolarization for example prolonged QT intervals hypoxia bradycardia acidosis and hypokalemia can lead to uh, triggered due activity due to after depolarization which can lead to an abnormal electrical activity and then we say altered in alteration and impulse conduction can happen due to re-entry re circuits conduction block and bypass tracks so that's about it and for this video i think we'll stop it here and you can go ahead and watch the next video and the next video we're going to go ahead and talk about supraventricular tachycardias all right ladies and gentlemen thank you very much talk to you soon